Hello, welcome to Dulce America. How y'all doing? My name is Bing Futch. Back from vacation, back from tour, and ready to dish out uh, some more workshop stuff focusing on um, beginners, novices, and uh, beginner intermediates. Uh, but advanced people can also learn from this type of stuff. Today we're going to look at, look ma, no picks. We're going to do some finger picking exercises and talk about some of the um, ideas and techniques you can use when you want to finger pick. Finger picking is an awesome way to get a different tone out of your mountain dulcimer. Now the mountain dulcimer is a very whispery, quiet instrument, uh, so finger picking makes it even more so. But if you have a pickup and you are amplified, it takes some of the pressure off of you to get more volume out there and you can just focus on, on creating a different tone. Now with a pick, of course, you're going to have um, a sharper attack and you're going to have more of a treble sound, a higher, thin sound. Um, when you're playing with a pick. And also a lot of strumming going on there. But when you play with your fingers, because our fingers are soft, we are going to be touching the strings with something that is offering a little less resistance and the tone is going to change from a trebly to a more bassy or a mid-rangey tone, softer, calmer, more mellow. And a lot of people really desire that when they play. And there are a number of things you can do when you're finger picking, and we'll go over those real quick. Um, so let's get started with a couple of things. First of all, what fingers to use. And uh, I use the thumb, the index finger, and the middle finger, and just these three together. And what you want to do is you want to get the thumb on the melody string, and you're going to press against the melody string so that your thumb is on the side closest to you. Index finger is going to be on the middle string, and it's going to be on the opposite side of the string pressing in towards the thumb. Then the middle finger is going to come in on the bass string. It too is going to be focusing towards you as opposed to away from you. So your thumb is pressing away, your index finger is pulling in, and your uh, middle finger is pulling in. What you should be able to do now is with those fingers now pressed against those strings is to pinch them together and sound all three strings at once like this. This is great for when you want to sound chords, and you'll also notice that when I put my fingers back down on the strings, it effectively mutes them. So, you can also use this as a damper for more rhythmic control over what you're doing. Okay, so we've got the pinch going on here, and of course you can use this when you're playing chords. You can also use the index finger to brush across the strings to get a strumming um, effect to mix things up a little bit. Just by dragging it. And you can kind of take your time and just lollygag across the strings and make them sound out like that. And now to get some arpeggios moving, that's us moving through chords and playing those notes one at a time as opposed to playing them all at once as you would with a strum or a pluck or a pinch. So with our fingers placed there, just go ahead and start cycling from the melody string to the bass string like this. Hopefully you can see that okay. Melody, middle, bass, melody, middle, bass, melody, middle, bass, melody, middle, bass. Try that and play it and try and get them as uh, consistently spaced apart as possible. Use a metronome. It's always a great way to make sure you're not speeding up or slowing down. And set it for something like 65, 68 beats per minute and just go nice and slow with it. And for each click of the metronome, play a note. Now I want to show you something else that I'm doing here, and it may not be very obvious. I'll flip the uh, dulcimer up just a little bit so the camera here can see. See the other two fingers I've got there? They are anchored against the side of the soundboard. That's keeping my fingers and my hand from moving around too much. Now, not everybody needs to do this. Um, I do it just because I want to be sure that I'm not 
moving around too much. But you may not have to do it, but try that if you're having a hard time remaining in one place. Also notice I'm playing right above the sweet spot on the mountain dulcimer as opposed to down here. Because there's more flex with these strings, because we're further away from the bridge, it's going to feel a lot better on your fingers, it's going to sound a lot better than if you were to do it over here with a more nasal sound the closer you get to the bridge if you're plucking and finger picking in the strum hollow down here. Now, that's a neat little one, two, three, one, two, three uh, cadence we've got going on there, but most of the songs we're playing are probably in 4-4 four, four time. In order to fill out a measure, what we're going to want to do is come back across the strings and pick one more note. So one way we can do that is to go one, two, three, four. So I'm coming back across from the bass string to the middle string. And that would give me a measure's worth of arpeggios. Another way to do that would be to hit the bass string another time. Or hit the melody string another time. Another one I like to do is this. Melody, bass, middle, bass, melody, bass, middle, bass. You get a nice little counterpoint happening there. Having all of those approaches in your toolbox is really awesome because basically you want to forget about this after a while and not think, hmm, which picking pattern should I use for this song? As long as you remember one thing, that melody is king. Melody is king and everything should be done to support it, whether it be harmonies, chords, and your rhythms. All should support the melody, and the melody is going to tell you what your rhythm is going to be. So be able to switch out and double pluck a melody string, or double pluck a bass string if the melody is going there. A good example of something like that would be this tune I was just playing, uh, which is uh, The Weary Kind from the motion picture Crazy Heart. And so the picking pattern I'm using here is I got my D chord going to A, B minor, G, D, back to A, D, then I walk up to G. Watch again what I do there. Here we go. Going from A to G, I'm walking up on the bass string. Watch my finger there. See how I used my middle finger to play that note enough times in a row because I wanted to make sure I was there for every note of the walk up on the bass string. If I had gone ahead and stuck with my picking pattern, um, I would have had to fill in some extra notes there before hopping back, and that would have cluttered things up a little bit. So always be aware that sometimes you're going to change that picking pattern to service the melody or any walk-ups or any um, passing tones you might be introducing into the music. So take your favorite piece of music that you have memorized that you normally strum or flat pick, and instead go at it with this finger uh, picking style. And just be true to the melody and let those fingers repeat where they need to. So what I'm doing also when I think about this stuff is when a note, when the melody has come to a pause, when the melody kind of chills out, that's going to be usually a clear note. It's going to be a half note, dotted half note, a tied note. And when the melody is sustaining, that's when we really need to bring in some additional arpeggios to fill in the rhythm in the background. And so when that happens, you can be very creative about what strings you do with that and how you work in any additional parts. So let me 
me try that again. Notice I'm mixing up a little bit of um, the pinch to get my chords to sound. And doing a little bit of fill in on the middle string, not too much. This is the Holly Bears of Berry. Sometimes I'm putting just a little extra note on the bass string, on the middle string, wherever the melody is not, in order to give it just a little bit of harmony. You don't have to go all out and play all three strings. You can sometimes just play partial harmonies. You can also get your brush strokes in there to begin measures in measures, wrap things up, give bookends to the phrases that you're playing. Also notice how I'm putting those little additional notes in there. Again, it's just counterpoint. Watch again how I use the bass. It's just like having an orchestra. If you think about your dulcimer as three different instruments and play them as so, then those other strings will suddenly become double basses and flutes and woodwinds, all complementing the melody that you're laying out. So by all means, practice using these three fingers. Practice the sequences in which you'll play. Go from melody to bass. Go from bass to melody. Mix it up a little bit. And of course, mix in your pinches and your brushes like that. And so much more you can do. Practice, play around with it. Don't think too much about it with your right hand. And work through some of your favorite material and you'll be finger picking in no time. Thank you very much for tuning in, everybody. And I got more workshops coming just around the corner and lots of exciting things on the horizon. So keep playing every day, just a little bit. Until next time, this is Bing Futch. We'll see you.